Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. When a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, and especially if she has a strong family history of breast cancer, she may want to consider genetic testing. Genetic testing could be used to determine if someone has a change or abnormality in their genes, known as a mutation, that make them more likely to develop certain diseases like cancer. Deciding to undergo genetic testing is a personal decision, and it's important to understand what type of information you may learn from that test. Here to discuss genetic testing, who, when, and how, is Dr. Lanzetta Neal, internal medicine specialist and physician in the Mayo Clinic Breast Diagnostic Clinic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Neal. It's nice to meet you. Well, thank you very much, Tracy. Dr. Good Neal. Good to see you, Tom. Thank you. Nice to see you. She's my neighbor. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I should have brought s- potato salad to this <laughs> meeting. <laughs> you have a little celebration at the breast clinic now yes we do this is the 25th year that the breast clinic has been in operation at mayo clinic pretty amazing that's a lot of patients over 25 years oh you got that right Hmm. i think we've helped a lot of people what percentage of breast cancers are hereditary is this something that anyone who has breast cancer should be thinking about not really Hmm. it turns out that five to ten percent of breast cancers are hereditary About 15 to 20% are what we call familial, and then 70 to 80% are just sporadic or random. Familial means run in families. Yep. How's that not hereditary? Right. So there are other factors that we take into account. When we're looking at uh, these families, you know, it looks like they have this horrible family history, and we run the genetic tests we have available and find out that they're negative. Now, part of that could be that, um, you know, we just haven't figured out whether or not there's a gene that fits that family. But we think that it's mostly due to environmental uh, factors. So uh, consider that in a family, um, you're sort of born in the same place, raised in the same place. You're all eating the same food for Thanksgiving. And what in that family is particular to that family that, just sort of contributes to these findings. Hmm. So tell us about genetic testing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a whole new field in, in medicine. What, what exactly, what, what is it? Well, let's think of it this way. You know, we're all born with uh, 46 genes, or chromosomes. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, a chromosome is just a giant strand of DNA, and a section of a chromosome is a gene. Most of the time, the genes are working just perfectly, but sometimes there's either an inherited defect from one parent or another or both, and sometimes a gene will just sort of break down on its own and stop doing the job that it was originally meant to do, which is programming correct structuring of body parts or how a body part works. So it's a failure of, uh, you're looking at genes, basically, Mm -hmm. in this big strand called a a chromosome. That's right. And you're looking for an abnormality in a particular gene, or or when you do DNA testing or genetic testing, are you looking at all of the genes? When we do DNA testing for a gene mutation, we're sort of focused on the genes that we know that contribute to correct structuring of breast tissue. And how do you know who should have genetic testing and who shouldn't, who doesn't need it? Yeah, that's, that's been tough. And uh, there's a group called the National Comprehensive Cancer Network who's come up with some rules when I'm, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking about breast cancer, as to who should get genetic testing. And so we're mostly interested in women who are under 50 who have breast cancer, Women who are under 60 who have triple negative breast cancer. Are you guys familiar with that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that estrogen, progesterone, and HER2. Is that yep, the, there's three, okay. three uh, biomarkers that we look for. But if all that's three another are, show. That's another <laughs> we show. We have done that show. Yeah, yeah. I tell it, that's good. <laughs> but um, if all three of those biomarkers are what we call negative, meaning the cancer is not using estrogen, progesterone, or HER2 protein to grow, and you're under 60, we would be interested in doing genetic testing. And then should the relatives of that person, if they get the green light that they should go ahead and do genetic testing, everyone else should? Or if one person does it, 
anybody that's blood related to that person is also positive? You know, we're mostly interested in first degree relatives okay. or male relatives. So if my grandfather had breast cancer, I'd be pretty interested in determining whether there was a genetic mutation that caused his cancer that might have been passed to my mother and then passed on to me, or passed to my father and then passed on to me. How do you do the test? It's a simple blood test. So you draw mm -hmm. a small sample of blood? That's and correct. Where's the test done? Do well, we have several different labs across the country that we send it out to. We don't do these tests at Mayo at present. And what about cost? Well, it turns out that if the conditions, meaning if the reasons for doing the test are correct, legit, legit <laughs> thanks, um, that a lot of insurance companies now are looking into covering the costs, including Medicare. Really? Yeah. And what, how much does it cost approximately? I'd say thirty-eight to forty-five hundred dollars. There's some people, though, that would say, I don't want my insurance to know that. I don't want them to cover it. I don't want them to know it yep, because that, they might hold that against me for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, uh, discrimination laws um, are being looked at. I think uh, there's a law called GINA, G-I-N-A, G -I -N -A, which is the genetic information. It's some sort of discrimination mm -hmm. uh, law that prohibits prohibits um, discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, and that works fairly well for medical uh, discrimination, for like, things like life insurance, sure. uh, other insurance policies. You want to investigate that because it varies from state to state. There's an important piece of this puzzle, and that is the genetic counselor. So explain yes. what oh. a genetic counselor does and when they are called. We look for certified genetic counselors, and they don't just do cancer. You know, they do a lot of maternal, fetal, um, and other developmental sorts of things. But you, you remember I said under 50 with breast cancer, or if you have a first degree relative who had breast cancer under 50 or triple negative under 60, um, and it was your mom or your sister uh, or your child, uh, then that's when we really want them to weigh in on whether or not genetic testing should be done. So we really defer to them a lot. Does uh, the Do the results of the genetic testing ever change your recommended treatment? Yes, they can impact that because you can imagine that, say you carry a BRCA gene mutation that's associated with breast cancer or ovarian cancer, we will talk to women about surveillance. So uh, compared to me, since I don't have a family history of breast cancer, I started screening mammograms at age 40, and um, you know I get a clinical breast exam once a year, and I do monthly breast self-awareness. But say you had a first-degree relative who had this sort of mutation that puts them at a pretty high risk for developing breast cancer in the future those people would start screening 10 years before the age of the mm -hmm. youngest affected relative. Their screening would consist of more frequent clinical breast exams, where someone who knows how to do a really good breast exam would do that twice a year. And in addition to screening mammogram, we would probably add in an annual screening breast MRI. But and that's at this point in time. What woman would ever know that she's got a BRCA gene unless she had breast cancer and had genetic testing? That's right. Or had a relative who went in uh, or had breast cancer early and went in and had that genetic testing done. Is, is there anybody, any woman who hasn't been diagnosed with breast cancer that you would recommend have genetic testing to see if they have this gene? Well, mainly the ones who have a first-degree relative with mm. breast cancer before the age of 50 or triple negative or bilateral breast cancer before the age of 60. Well, congratulations on 25 great years at the oh, Breast Diagnostic you. Clinics. Good to have you with us. Mayo Clinic internist and breast cancer expert, Dr. Lonnie Neal. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Good to see you both.